Hello everyone, welcome to my vlog. This is for almost a mystery Mondays. This is for the Mask Singer, season nine, episode three. It is raining off and on here, so we will see if my power and Wi-Fi hold out our internet. I'm not actually connected to the Wi-Fi. So first off, I want to mention a couple of things that I had brought up in my last vlog about episode two. First of all was whether or not Gary Busey is still alive. I looked into that and he is. He is now in his 60s, still alive and kicking. Doing pretty good actually. So the second thing that I wanted to mention was that my sister texted me. Remember I couldn't remember which song Rock Lobster sang on episode two, and I also could not remember which song for sure Medusa sang. The one Medusa sang was Dancing Queen, which was the one that I said if I were to be on there. <laughs> not gonna happen, but anyway. And I did say that if I were to be on there, that would be the song that I would choose, either the actual Mamma Mia song or Dancing Queen, and then I was like, mm, definitely Dancing Queen. So, uh, I'm starting to have a pressure headache. Um, I had my job interview earlier. I think it went well. I'll find out eventually. Um, anyway, seemed like there was something else I was going to say. Oh, yes. I did not look into what Rock Lobster sang. I'm pretty sure that I could probably find it fairly easily. Um, most of you probably already know what he sang. But I just could not remember for sure. And I do think Night Owl did sing um, Fernando after I thought about it more. So anyway, episode three was New York Night, so Medusa sang New York, New York. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. New clues for her, which I did not write down. All of them wrote down the ones that I thought were most important. Um, they included that her dad's favorite song is sung by Chris Martin or Coldplay. The Robin seemed to forget that when that, that was what she said whenever he was talking about it and he was still referencing her and Chris Martin having a connection. She literally said, my dad's favorite song, I'm showing Chris Martin. So to me, it was either saying Chris Martin is her dad or Chris Martin sings her dad's favorite song. And then she also, um, for her, they showed Terrier's Mask, um, you know, Terrier from The Mask Singer, who was Duff Goldman. So I kind of, you know, I was like, oh, maybe it's another cook. And I was like, oh, if it's another cook, it could be Amberelle, right? Because as cooks are concerned, she's the one that I would consider to be more not mainstream than the rest of them, a little more odd, so to speak. Um, so I looked her up and unfortunately, you know, I found some information or saw some information about Duff Goldman and this Antonia lady streaming and I was like, oh, I guess maybe maybe people are thinking that it's this Antonia lady, but I don't know. Um, but they also showed the Brooklyn Bridge was like her extra clue and Anne Burrell lives in New York City. She is from New York State. So I was like, well, I could be Anne Burrell, right? Um, so you know, I think it'd be awesome if she turned out to be Medusa, as I have been saying. I don't feel like Medusa is actually a singer, even though the panel and audience seem to think that she is doing really awesome. But then I had another thought on that. You know, for one thing, when I went back and watched, um, you know, I'm streaming, so the busier the streamer is, the different it makes a difference in the sound and such. So I went back and watched it at a different time when the episode was older, that is episode one I'm talking about, and she sounded better to me. And I think it was the sound quality difference because I was not watching it when a whole bunch of people were watching it, if that makes sense. So the second character um, on episode three was Polar Bear. And he mentioned New York flavor. He's from New York also, um, given his clues. They pointed to that. Well, he straight out said that, actually. I'm excited to be there on New York night because he's from New York. And he said he came from a rough neighborhood. They show a scratch-off lottery ticket, which made me go DJ, maybe. Um... And the lottery ticket said, cold, hard cash, and I have a lot of dollar signs on it. I'm like, where's Trey Dollar signs from? No, I don't, I don't think he's from New York City. But that was who came to mind with all the dollar signs for me. 
Um, he said he developed an interest in electronics as a kid. He took stuff apart to see how it worked, which a lot of kids do, and then they don't put it back together. <laughs> I had some kids that did that. Um, but anyway, he said that sparked a knockout idea, and then they showed some boxing stuff. Uh, and he said it helped him turn the tables on his entire industry. And then I said, there's lots of DJ clues in here. He's obviously a DJ. They showed electric sparks. He said, this bad boy invented a sound no one was making. They showed huge speakers and a DJ stand. And he said his legendary status put his borough on the maps. And, um, well, said it helped to put his borough on the maps. Um, where was I at? Oh, I've got this pen over here to use for this that I'm not using. Imagine that. <laughs> so it helped put it on the maps. They showed a message in a bottle. He said he's there to honor, he was on the Masked Singer to honor a fellow New Yorker who changed the game just like him. And then he performed Rapture by Blondie. He was not the best singer, but he was definitely a very good performer, which DJs, you know, they hype up the crowd and everything. So I was still going, he's got to be a DJ. And um, a lot of DJs, unfortunately, I don't know a whole lot about, right? So the, his extra clue was from the Long Island Medium. Um, Teresa Caputo, which I thought was interesting because at one point I was like, maybe she, because of the astral clue, was Medusa, right? So anyway, she said she sees him standing at a podium giving a speech, an acceptance speech, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, at which point I'm going, what DJ is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, right? Um, but anyway, this guy is, in my opinion, from the clues and such, was definitely an OG DJ, um, one of the originals for sure. And so he, as I said, he seems he seemed older to me, and I thought you know he has to be because he was one of the original DJs. And now DJing has been going on for quite some time. So my first thought, of course, was Fla Flavor Flav because he said the New York flavor thing, and I kind of got stuck on that. And um, Nicole originally guessed Grandmaster Flash, and I was like, I really like that one too, especially going with what she was saying about his clues and stuff, right? So then the final character on this episode to perform was California Roll, and I was like, or rolls because there were five of them so i immediately thought boy band right because i'm going which boy bands have five people <laughs> and then i went "Ooh, the jackson five. Oh wait michael's not with us anymore more on that here in a bit right if you know me you know where my mind is going anyway so one of the guys talked like <sighs> My mind just went someplace else again, though. Anyway, one of the guys talked with a surfer accent. They showed soy sauce and a cocktail on a table. And this particular guy said he's been on Broadway. And then they showed sunglasses, a.k.a. shades, um, behind a female who said this entree has many sides. Interesting. Anyway. Um, one of them said, one of the guys said, they're a scholar with a degree from an Ivy League school, which I need to look more into that. Another said, he never sleeps. He got used to it from DJing all night long. Gotta pay the rent. Um, so I was going to look into who some of these people might be the DJ, but the group that I'm the particular group that I'm thinking about does have one member that I know for a fact did DJing. Um, just throwing that out there. <laughs> so anyway, um, the, one of them said, um, I couldn't keep track of if it was the same one or not. I needed to pay more attention to the way that the actual California roll looked because they were different. But anyway, one of them said, went out west for, went out west for the gleeful rays and silver screens. And they showed a map that had an X on it whenever he said that. And so, of course, that brought my mind to Glee a little bit, though um, 
at one point when they were talking about stuff, which is where my mind went with the surfer thing, um, I thought about the cast of High School Musical, and I don't recall if one of them for sure has surfing on it or not, but I do know for a fact that Zac Efron and Ron Sanborn both surf, and possibly others of the cast, because there are so many of them. Actually, Corbin Blue surfs. He was on a movie about surfing. So see where I'm going with that there. And I might change my mind before I'm done doing my vlog. Oh my gosh. It's not, it has happened before. <laughs> several times, actually. So anyway. Um, so yeah, they showed that map that had the X on it that was like treasure map type thing and made me think of... I'm not going to be able to think of the name of the movie. Oh my gosh. The one with all the little kids on it <laughs> that are looking for the treasure. Um, yeah. So... So, anywho, and then they showed a drawing of a tiger, and one of the judges said something about Tiger King, and I'm like, no, nah, he's still in jail. But anyway, um, not the Tiger King, he's still in jail. But my thought is, um, these it's a group of people, either family or, you know, a group that's been on a show or has been in a group together that have also done their own separate things, and that's what these other clues reference, right? Um, so... The girl said, the female one, said that she's rubbed shoulders with greats from Dolly to Snoop. And I was like, I mean, yeah, that classifies who I'm thinking of. Um, she falls into that category, but there are two people that I'm thinking of that could possibly fall under that category. One of the guys said that he got married, which is where I'm going, hmm, if it's a group of people where only one of the guys got married, it might not be who I was originally thinking, right? Anyway, um, and I believe it was the same guy said it's been a busy ride, he hardly has time for himself. Then the female said she credits each of these ingredients, the four guys, um, for the success she is today. So think about that, right? So my my pretty much original thought on them when I realized it was one girl and four guys were the Jacksons, right? Um, the Jackson 5, Janet sang with the Jackson 5 at one point when one of the brothers had decided that he no longer wanted to perform. Their dad would not allow the girls to sing with the group, but when the brothers were older, and I want to say that probably all of them except for Michael were of age and um, they called uh, from what I understand called Janet up onto the stage when they were doing a concert and had her sing with them and after that the dad was like oh well okay I guess she can sing with you guys <laughs> you know so she did sing with them at one point so my thought on it is it's probably Janet Randy who who has done DJing by the way Jermaine Tito and Marlon and to me when they sang the first song that they sang the guy who I don't think I wrote down what they sang <sighs> anyway um maybe I did but anyway the guy who was doing the majority of the singing to me on the first song sounded exactly like Marlon Jackson to me um <laughs> So anyway, they performed, I did write it down, oh good. They performed Paparazzi by Lady Gaga. They did very, very good, but I felt like if they had sang it more to that actual tune, they may have done even better on it, but I felt like it reflected the style of music that they sing for the most part, which is a more laid back, like easy soft rock, um, in which case, I guess it probably wouldn't be the Jackson 5 because they, they didn't sing a lot of that sort of stuff. It made me think, the style they sang it made me think a lot of like the Temptations. Um, but I don't think it's the Temptations. So anyway, um, but yeah, after they performed, I was like, I think it's definitely the Jackson 5. But the more I talk about the clues and stuff, right, it's like, well, maybe not. But their extra clue, which was brought out by a rat, and he was carrying a slice of pizza in his mouth and Ken was like it's New York pizza rat and I was like oh I guess you only know that if you've been to New York right but anyhow he flipped the piece of the slice of pizza around and on the back of it it says a uh, five billion not five billion sold not five billion followers just five billion 
right? And one of the guys said, five billion and growing, but who's counting? And I was like, okay, so like, if it is the Jackson 5, they may have sold, they may have sold 5 billion albums, you know? Um, between them, I'm sure they have 5 billion followers on social media platforms. So I'm like, who else would be so big that they would have 5 billion of something, right? That's my big, and my biggest deal on that. Um, so anyway, for them, Jenny Guest, Pentatonix, who I don't know a whole lot about. Um, and apparently I missed a baseball clue in there. So that goes toward High School Musical again, because they literally play baseball on High School Musical, right? Um, and there was also a folder that said Grand Project on the front of it. And um, there might be some significance to the word grand, but like the person was sitting at a school desk and I believe it was Ken that guessed High School Musical and brought that up. And those were two of the clues that I did not even notice. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was, I was paying attention, <laughs> except I was writing stuff down every now and then and like pausing, you know, and I was like, I missed those two clues. Um, but those kind of point toward perhaps a school or something, right? So, um, oh yes, okay, so anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, as I mentioned, Jenny guessed Pentatonix, Nicole guessed the people from Pitch Perfect because she's like the baseball pitch, and then it said something about perfect, um, Ken, as I said a bit ago, guessed High School Musical, which everyone was booing, and I was like, I mean, that was literally my absolute first thought um when i well no actually it wasn't my very first thought <laughs> sorry my very first thought when i realized it was a guy and or a girl and four guys was oh it's the jackson five and then i was like well i guess it could be people from high school musical but when they started singing and i saw the clues and such i went back to the jackson five but now i'm second guessing that again you know or third guessing it or <laughs> however you want to say it um but yeah I did briefly consider them early on and then dismissed it as I often do, but now that I realize there's the baseball clue and think about the surfer clue, both of those go to Corbin Brown. So if the same person, if that was the same person, this could very well be the cast of High School Musical. Um, and I will tell you who my guesses are for them, the, the particular people. So anyway, I just wanted to say that I was very surprised that none of them guessed people from Glee because they have been guessing certain people from Glee since the first season of this show and they literally said Gleeful and I was like, it's like a Glee clue and the school desk and Grand Project and I'm sure there are baseball games on Glee also, <laughs> you know, so I was really surprised that none of them guess people from Glee. But so my thoughts on High School Musical are that it would be Corbin Blue, Lucas Graybill, Zac Efron, Ryan Sanborn, because those were literally the four main guys, and Ashley Tisdale, because I don't see Vanessa Hudgens and Ashley Tisdale being on there together. Though Ashley Tisdale already had a fairly successful career, whereas Vanessa Hudgens didn't, so it might, it could be Vanessa Hudgens. And one of the guys also could be the guy that plays for Zach on there. I don't know his first name, or his real name, but, um, or I can't think of it, but I need to look at their heights and their builds and all of that. I know one of them was, seemed, um, fairly huskier than the others, which it could be any of those groups, right? So anyway, I'm going to do a spoiler alert. Most of you have probably already seen the episode, but if you haven't, be warned. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Okay, so anyway, the first one that was revealed was Polar Bear, who turned out to be Grand Master Flash. Right? Ooh. So awesome, but anyway, so the panel's guesses were, which I should have written these before I did that, but I didn't, so their guesses were 
Ginny guessed Flavor Flav, whom I also stuck with. Robin said LL Cool J. Nicole guessed Grandmaster of Flash, and she explained the clues, and I'm like, I have a feeling she's right, but I'm still going with Flavor Flav, because I don't want to just change my guess, because she makes the clues look like they're so right. You know what I mean? Um, I was like, either way, I'll be glad that the person's on there. And so Ken guessed P. Diddy. And Robin and the audience and everyone laughed at him for saying that. But I honestly liked all of their guesses except Robin's. Because LL Cool J can sing. I've heard that voice sing. <laughs> he can sing. So I was like, mm, no, not LL. No. Anyway. Um, so as of that time when Jenny, or no, when Nicole... Sorry, when Nicole got Grandmaster Flash right, as of that moment, all of the members of the panel except for Robin have gotten one right because last week, Ken got one and Jenny got one. And so um, with the Grandmaster Flash, Nicole also has one. So come on, Robin, get it in gear. <laughs> um, he did really well last season, if I recall correctly, and it seems like sometimes one of them will do really good one season, and then the next season it's like they don't have a clue. <laughs> anyway, um, so as I already said, I stuck with Flavor Flav. Of course, was wrong, but anyway. So then Medusa and California Rolls battled by singing Uptown Girl by Billy Joel, another song that I really love. I love the song selections this season, actually, for the most part. <laughs> and so I did, they did say, which I guess they've said on the other two episodes also, but I didn't realize it, that the panel is still only voting between the two that do the battle. Um... I don't really like that. I feel I want the whole entire audience to vote because for one, you've got four panel members and you got two people battling. That means three of them have to say the same person or you have to have someone that's a tiebreaker, right? So anyway, and I, don't, I would, I'm interested to see what would happen if they have a tie and how have they not had one yet, you know what I mean? But anyway, that being said, <laughs> I did think they changed that, but I guess I just wasn't paying a whole lot of attention because, as I said, I have been watching the episodes with my grandson. Um, so when I looked up Amberell's information, as I said a while ago, Google said that Antonia something and Duff Goldman were trending now, so I feel like Medusa is Antonia. Um... I feel like I left something out there, but I guess not. But yeah, it, you know what I did? I didn't write it down. Oh, the Battle to Uptown Girl. I skipped part of it. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, so the first group, char the first character from... Okay. Blah, 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 blah. This was the final episode for the first group. We'll call it group A because that's what they used to call it. Um, so the first person moving on to the quarterfinals turned out to be, which did not surprise me, I wrote it down before they told it, California Row. And they just did a lot better than Medusa did in the sing-off. I'm not saying she didn't do good. They did better than she did to me. She seemed nervous before it started. And when she initially started singing, she seemed nervous. As she got probably about two-thirds of the way through, she got her groove back and was doing better. But, um, so, she was not the champion of the first group anymore, so... As I said, when I looked up Amber Rill's info on Google, it said Antonia something, I want to say Enhoff or something like that, and Duff Goldman were trending, so now I, that made me, you know, feel like Medusa was this Antonia woman, but I wanted to stay with Amber Rill, who is so cool and awesome, unique, different, you know, she's a great cook, great Seems like a great person. I was going to say great woman, but I don't know that because I've never actually met Anne Pharrell. That would be great. But anyway, 
Ken stuck with Susan Boyle, um, whom ironically I'm pretty sure was on the Mama Mia movie. Just saying. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that she was. Jenny went with Halsey, who was one that I don't know a whole lot about again. Robin guessed Kesha for reasons I don't understand. And Nicole said, Lord, because she's British and they showed Buckingham Palace and these panel members seem to be stuck on the Buckingham Palace picture. There have been way more clues connecting to New York City. I still feel like the airline ticket said that she flew from LAX to Tokyo and she was like, I want to know where I'm from. So maybe she's from LA, maybe she's from Tokyo, but she's also been to New York. That part confuses me, um, as I'm sure it's supposed to confuse people, but she was actually, as my sister told me, the commercials before gave away, not revealed because Nicole rang the bell, right? Um, the bell there, for whatever reason, calling the ding dong, keep it on bell so many more things they could call it but okay they want to make jokes about nick when it's in my opinions it needs to be a family show they need to clean it up quite a bit and take out the cursing and make the women wear more family friendly clothing sorry girls don't always need to have your girls hanging out if you know what i mean anyway so i wanted to know who she was right but okay was my attitude so here's the part i'm going to tell y'all um when the show was going off medusa wholeheartedly started singing new york new york you know um i can't even think of the words to the song but you know the song she was singing earlier on and i didn't think did a hugely great job on it she started singing it and I mean wailing this, and I'm sitting there going, oh my word, is that RuPaul? Like, what? Because the oddities clues fits, There's he's done stuff with snakes, he's most likely done stuff with planes, you know, people consider, consider him odd, he considers himself odd, and I'm like, what? Like, wait, but then I'm looking at the at the build right of medusa and i'm like i know that they have made people look taller than they actually are they've made people look shorter than they actually are like dionne warwick when she was on there me and my sister are going i don't know somebody that's five foot two five foot four at the most and dionne warwick is like five seven i think and it turns out to be her and it's like how the heck did they make her look that way so maybe like I've not seen RuPaul in a while he may have put on a little bit of weight or something the body style to me does not look right for him but it would be so awesome if he's on there this season they had Shangela come out and give a clue um on episode two so like it would just be so awesome which makes me think they do have the people come out and do the clues and maybe that is who Medusa is I don't want to go back and watch every single episode from season one onward and try and figure out who she is i just really really do but anyway that being said i don't think that rupaul has done any of those clues i don't think he's been on there at all um other than people guessing him constantly which could be you know if you're constantly guessed i would call that kind of being on there you know but anyway, I wanted to mention before I forget, and this is like, you know, my final comment pretty much. Um, next episode, episode four of The Masked Singer, they are going to do D DC Superhero Night. So I'm excited about that and can't wait to see it. Um, it would be really cool in my opinion if some of the outfits some of the characters were actual dc superheroes but i don't think that's gonna happen and i tend to get my marvel and dc characters messed up so i'm not gonna mention who i hope will be on there or what song i hope they might play anything along that line <laughs> i'm just super excited that they're doing it anyway 
every bah, I always mess up my line y'all I always do I almost said every bun everyone have a great whatever time of night or day it is in your part of the world stay safe and stay positive